Right. Uh, very pleased to have our next presentation here today. Elizabeth Fenn has worked for the Vietnam Club as a caretaker for the past three summers. And after graduating from UVM in the three environmental sciences, and she's going to be speaking to us about phone monitoring in the Mount Mansfield Alpine. Thanks for being here. to 
more screen walls and things like that. Um, so what we're trying to get out of these photos in the end. And then this shows you that Audra photo that I was talking about earlier. Um, so you can see again the reference photo um, tells us how to line everything up. And then the neat part about these is you can see the arrows are pointing to that pin set into the rock. And so within each cluster, it's, there's an instruction of which way to orient the frame. So that top picture is in the northwest corner, and that bottom picture is in the southwest corner. And then this is a little bit of unofficial research that I did this fall um, to sort of see what's going on up there. Because what we have right now is a lot of anecdotal evidence. We have old caretakers who come up and tell us how good the mountain looks. We have hikers who've been coming up there since they were little and, and tell us, you know, this used to be a dirt patch, but now it's not. But we're looking for proof. So um, I went out and retook the reference photos at two spots. Um, this is the account from the mountain. This is the Mansfield Bridge Line, which is over here on the left, which is the top. Um, so I retook a photo at Drift Rock, which is this really large glacial erratic. Um, about a half a mile from the top of the toll road, and then also a photo of Sunset Junction, which is only about a quarter mile from the summit. And so this is Drift Rock. Um, something to keep in mind is that the 2004 photos were taken in July, um, and I took mine in September, so that accounts for that color difference. When we redo the study next year, we'll line up the seasons better. Uh, but yeah, so just really simple, really quick, what you can see is Sort of coming back down along here, past the tripod, there's a lot more growth in uh, in this fall's picture. Um, there's also what appears to be a, a sort of a social trail going around the back of the drift rock, which is right here. It's something that a lot of hikers, especially kids, really like to scramble up on top. Um, and you can see in 2014, it does seem to have started to grow over. Um, And this one is really exciting. This is um, right at Sunset Junction. And so much sedge has grown in back around the puncheon that we've got there. Um, despite the fact that we've actually replaced that puncheon since 2004, you can see the border, um, which is a fairly disruptive pro process. You have to set those sills into the ground so that they don't wobble around. Um, but it's still come back, which is really great. And the other interesting Thing that we're going to look at is sort of different locations on the mountain. Um, people have interacted with caretakers to a different degree. <laughs> Basically, if, if you drive up the toll road, you have to walk right past us. And we try to talk to everyone, um, at least greet them if they don't want a, a lecture or <laughs> an educational lecture. Um, we let them go, but we do try to talk to everyone who comes up the toll road. But a spot like this has hiking trails that come up from the bottom of the mountain. That they've, so these hikers have probably seen signs about the vegetation, but they probably haven't interacted with a caretaker yet. Um, so that's the other thing we're going to try to look at. If, if places are recovering better, where we're right on top of it and talking to everyone, like on the summit where we're there all day, every day, making sure folks are on the rocks. Um, yeah, if there's, any, if there's going to be any difference in that. Which has actually brought me to the last part of our project, which is an educational component. Um, we currently um, staff the visitor center and we staff the summit. And the visitor center has some natural history displays about the mountain. But we don't have any before and after shots, um, which I think is the most effective way to teach people. And so the beauty of this study is we're going to be able to create displays to show hikers. You know, it really does matter. You can see that, that it changes. Here's the two pictures. And it's also, it's a light enough and simple enough display that we can like print them and laminate them and give them to summit caretakers to carry at all times. So they can have them on the summit, they can have them if they're hiking home and just happen to run into a family to talk to. Um, and that's going to be a huge benefit for the caretaker program going on. Questions for a little bit? So, will you take photos just once during the season, or will you take 
many different temporal slices? Yeah, it's going to be one slice a season. Um, the originals were taken in July, so we're going to aim for July, um, obviously weather dependent. Um, we're going to try to make them on nice sunny days where things are clear. And then moving on in the future, we're hoping to do more than an 11, or less than an 11 year gap for the next round. And we're going to try to get them on the five year cycles. Um, and hopefully, train, hopefully make it a part of the Mount Mansfield caretaker program. Just something that the caretakers are, who are already up there, just part of their, every summer, every five summers, they, that's what they do in July. Questions? I wonder if anybody in the room is familiar with the um, photo analysis technique where you separate the colors in the digital image and you can evaluate the health of the plants or the plant community. Um, I think you get an indicator of stress. Uh, yeah, I have collaborators uh, that work in remote sensing that do exactly that kind of work. You can, you can use uh, any uh, index of yeah. stress. So I think you can take just you know your average digital camera yeah. and uh, process the image in a way that can give you an indication that perhaps the variables are the amount of trampling or the degree of climate change or something like that, drought stress or health over time. So that would be a really good expression. Alright, thank you very much.